So I'm standing in line at the bagel shop, and I look down on my side at the newspaper rack and see my picture. I'm on the cover of the Des Moines Register, my head in my hands in this failure position, and the cover reads in big black letters, Kating misses, cost Hawks the game. Immediately, I think about my mom's scrapbook. She had given me this thing about three months prior when I graduated high school over at Iowa City West High. And basically, this scrapbook just told the story of my athletic upbringing here in Iowa City. The beginning of the scrapbook was pictures of me, little toe-headed kid in Little League, and then Iowa City kickers, soccer jerseys, the old reversible red and white jerseys, all the way up to Iowa City press citizen clippings when the Trojan teams I was a part of won state championships, and another Des Moines Register article when I was named Iowa, I, Iowa High School Athlete of the Year, my senior year in high school, and I'm thinking, what in the hell is, where is this article going to go? How is this going to, how is this a part of my story? I jump on my Yamaha scooter after I get my, my bagel, head up Riverside Drive past Kinnick Stadium and think about what had happened the day before uh, in, during the football game. We're playing Ohio State that day. It's cold. It's late October. Uh, the team has been floundering a bit. The, uh, it was the second year of Coach Ferentz's career. The year before, uh, Coach only won one game. This year, we've only won one game up until the latter part of the season here, so there's a lot of pressure. I go out the first game, shank a 45-yard field goal, or uh, the first quarter and shank a 45-yard field goal. Go out the, the third quarter, miss a 35-yard field goal. And then in the fourth quarter, my head's completely spinning. I'm all out of it and go out and just a chip shot, 25-yard gimme, miss that one. So three missed field goals, we end up miss, losing the game by about 20, 21 points. Immediately when I'm on the sideline, as the clock's ticking down and the game's getting ready to be over, I think about my mom up in the stands. She had made this sweatshirt that she wore around that was all proud. It said Kading on the back with my number 95 and this button that they gave all these parents that she wore proudly on her, on her chest and wore those to the game. I thought about her having to walk through the, the Kinnick Stadium crowd on her way out, how she was feeling. I thought about my Uncle Pat down in Muscatine who'd been bragging me up. His nephew's this big Hawkeye football player now. He'd always go to the bar, uh, the corner tap in Muscatine, and drink bush lights and watch the, watch the games with his friends. How is he handling it now that, now that the, you know, his nephew's out there embarrassing himself in front of everybody? I thought about them as I walked off the field into the locker room. Uh, and get by scooter, move, move over towards a team meeting room. There's nothing more dreaded than a team meeting after a, a loss on Saturday. You've got to walk in amongst your teammates, and they put the, every play is, uh, is captured on video, and you have to watch every single play and get it critiqued. Uh, kickers, as we naturally are, are seated in the back of the, of the room. So I'm, I'm walking, walking through the rest of my teammates, the linebackers, the offensive linemen, the people that have been out there actually working throughout the course of the game. I got to walk by them down the aisle. Uh, some of them avert their eyes as I walk by. Some of them don't. Um, and get back to the, to the back row and watch those tape, the, the film, over and over again. So I leave, I leave Sunday feeling worse than I did um, the day after I walked out of the stadium. I look forward to getting back to school that week, the next day. Uh, school, to me, was sort of this escape from football. I was a very kind of active mind and always thinking about rehearsing those kicks over and over in my head. Look forward to getting back to school. I go over to the, to the main library and pull up my email, um, and in the inbox is four or five new emails that I hadn't seen from students across campus. It's hate mail. It's, Nate, you cost us the game, shank the field goals, you shouldn't be playing. I'm used to being picked on as a kicker a little bit, but not the hate mail. That's a new thing for me. So I can't even escape the game um, throughout the course of the week. Try to get into practice on Tuesday, a chance to sort of kick, you know, practice and kick, uh, kick, kick it out of your mind, start making some field goals, put the game behind me, go out and practice and only make like two out of ten field goals. Go out the next day and practice, same result. Just can't get that, that bad game out of my head and keep thinking about all the negative results that came from it. Go out Thursday, and Coach Ferentz grabs me as I'm walking out in the field, and he says, Nate, we trust you. We believe in you. We've seen you do it before. We wouldn't have given you a scholarship if we didn't, but you have to start making field goals. You've got to start, start putting points on the board. If you don't do it, there's someone behind you that we're going to put in there that can do it. So it was a little bit of a, a vote of confidence, but a little bit of a reminder saying, hey, you know, we're, this is, you know, for, for him and his coaching staff and for, for a lot of people there, this is the business. And there's a lot, lot more behind it than just trust and believing in people, unlike what it used to be like back in high school. So go out, uh, go into the game. We're playing Wisconsin on Saturday, another home game. And it's really the first time in my entire athletic career that I'm on the sideline hoping and praying not having to go in the game. Please, let's punt the ball. Let's score a touchdown. So all I have to do is kick an extra point. The last thing I want to do is have to go out there and try and kick a field goal. Um, luckily, my prayers were answered that day, and we only scored one touchdown. We got beat 21-7. to I only kicked one extra point and two kickoffs. Didn't have to go out there. Didn't have to go out and kick a kick a field goal because I, I knew in the back of my mind if I would have had to do it, the result would not have been good. 
again, head spinning again, go into Monday, back to the library, check my email, getting ready for, uh, for the school week, and this time it pops up another random email, but it's from a TA in the psychology department, Jane McFate. Just out of nowhere, had never met her before in my life, and she reaches out and just says, hey, I was sitting up in the 60th row at Kinnick, and I could just tell you were, you were in a bad place. I could, I could see it. Your body language, it, things, it just wasn't looking good. So she's like, hey, I'd love to just grab you. Would you like to meet me at, at the Java House sometime this week, and we can chat a little bit about some things that psychology and sports psychology and just ways to, to think about things during adverse situations. So just on a whim, trying to grasp for something, I, I take her up on it and meet her uh, that week on Thursday before we fly out to Penn State for the game that we're going to play uh, on, that, on that Saturday. Um, I grab her. She sits down and just starts talking about all these things that I, as an 18-year-old kid, had never really thought about before. She starts talking about breathing and how that helps slow your heart rate down and how that's part of meditation and calming down and slowing down as you're out in those sort of situations. She talks a lot about perspective and reminds me that there's about eight, nine billion people out in the world that could give a shit less whether the Hawkeyes win or lose or whether you make a field goal or miss a field goal. And she talks about process thinking instead of result thinking. Don't get out there and think about making the field goal and the consequences of making it or missing it. Think about the process steps, the things that you have to do in order for that result to take care of itself. Those things resonate a little bit, but by the time I'm jumping on the plane to fly out to Penn State, my mind is, at least at that point, really just kind of back in sort of a bad place and getting anxious again. Get out into the game in Penn State. It's this amazing, immaculate stadium. It's 100,000 plus stadium. Uh, it's a big game. It's Coach Ferris is going back to his home state. We're, we're the, his season was going down, uh, downhill again, just like his first season. So you could tell on the coaching staff's face that the pressure was sort of mounting. They have to win games too, just like I have to start making the field goals. Get out and I start having that same mindset as I did against Wisconsin the prior weekend, just thinking, please, please, no field goals. Let's kick some extra points and let's just get out of this thing without having to go out there and take that risk again. But this time my prayers were not answered. We go out. It's the very first drive. The drive stalls on the 30-yard line, and I'm getting ready to go out and trot out and kick a 48-yard field goal, which would be my longest field goal I've ever made as a Hawkeye. As I'm going out there, I have, immediately have these negative thoughts. But just for some reason, I'm able to grab my mind and think back to that conversation about breathing and slowing down. And I get out to my spot and line up the field goal. Some negative thoughts pop in again. I'm looking up, trying to, to aim it. You see the, the, the backdrop of the stadium is going up like a skyscraper behind the uprights. It's white out night at Penn State. All their fans are wearing white jerseys. You're hearing everybody screaming. And I'm just able to grab my mind again just for that split second and just tell myself, slow down, slow down, and just steal one little breath watch the ball snap, take my steps up and kick the ball and just peek up and see that thing flying between the uprights. And before, as a high school athlete, you would felt this really just kind of like innocent joy whenever things went right for you on the field. But this was the first time you just kind of feel relief. And that, re that relief was just the main feeling. We go on that game. I, I kick three more field goals, including two long ones. We win the game in overtime. Uh, we go in the locker room. Everybody's incredibly happy. We sing the Iowa fight song like we do here at Iowa whenever we win a football game. Lucky enough to have sang a lot, of, a lot of fight songs in the locker room throughout the course of my uh, Hawkeye career here, including uh, one after a Big Ten championship um, and took a lot of deep, slow breaths uh, before field goals throughout my Hawkeye career here too and ended up being the all-time leading scorer here for the Hawkeyes and, and an All-American uh, when I was here as well. In April of my senior year, I was drafted in the NFL by the San Diego Chargers. Um, I was lucky enough to to get the call on draft day. And then the month after that was May, we graduated here over at Carver and walked down the aisle. And uh, I remember going out with my folks to the car. My mom has this package for me. It's the graduation gift. And she opens it up and it's this really neat, well put together scrapbook like mom, moms are able to do in their free time with the black and gold cover. And open it up on the first page is that Des Moines Register article that says, Kating misses, cost Hawks the game. Thank you. <laughs> 